1. Okay, so I was working at a chain coffee shop in Austin, Texas for a little while. I was a barista. 20 at the time. Part-time college student. A little explanation before we jump in. Our company had a thing where if you spent $50 on gift cards, they get two free large drinks of their choice. So these two middle-aged women come in. Both dark hair, both on the heavier side, but no judgement. I am too, I will say. They come in and walk up to the counter. I give them the usual greet and ask if they know what they want. The main lady, let's call her Scarecrow, since she obviously doesn't have a brain, pulls out a gift card from her purse and says, Can you look and see how much money is on this card, please? I nod, smiling. Not the hardest thing to do. Of course, let me look. I pull up the gift card section and swipe the card. A receipt prints out, and I look at it. Says you have $36 on your card, ma'am. Remember this. Scarecrow nods and says, Would you mind putting 50 on the card? Again, no problem so far. Sure, no problem. I'll swipe that for you. I say, and put $50 for the amount to go on the card for them to get the free drinks. I look at Scarecrow. Please feel free for both of you to look at the menu and pick out the drinks you two want, and let me know when you're ready. I wait for a minute as they decide, and they order. I can't really remember the drinks, but it doesn't matter. I ring them in and finish the total. Okay, ma'am, that'll be $50. She hands me her card and I swipe it. The receipt prints out, and I hand her her copy along with the receipt that says how much money is on the card. Alright, ma'am, you have 86 on your card now. This is when the shit hits the fan, and it was bad shit. She looks at the receipt for the balance on her card, and says, Why is it $86? I shit you not, my brain made tire screeching sounds when she said that. Well ma'am, there was 36 on your card from before I put the $50 on. That obviously flew over her head, and she looked at me like I explained practical physics to a five-year-old. Well, where did that come from? The tire screeching went full-on car crash in my head. I don't know what face I was making, but on the inside, my Christopher Walking voice was saying, You're a fucking idiot. Because, ma'am, the $36 was already there. You put in $50. That's how you were able to get the free drinks. At this point, the light for the drinks was turning yellow, so my manager had to make them while I slowly explained to these grown-ass women simple math. But alas, it didn't get through to her fish-like brain, and she asked the same question. I sighed, printing out a piece of paper from the printer and doing the actual math for this fucking cow of a woman. And that's an insult to cows. Okay, ma'am, look. You had 36 on the card. Then you put 50 on the card. That's why it's 86. I say, writing it out for her to see. The manager makes the drinks, and I'm still explaining it to her. But I didn't pay for $86. Scarecrow says. No, ma'am, you didn't. You paid for 50 The extra 36 was already on there. After about five more minutes of me trying to explain elementary level addition and... probably visibly getting annoyed, I put my hands on the counter, take a long and deep breath and stare her dead in her stupid eyes and say as slowly as I can, Ma'am, you came in here with the gift card and I swiped it. It had $36 on there. Then you put $50 on there. That is how you managed to get this for free, I say pointing to her large beverages, which by now must be getting cold. So that is why your card is 86. After a few more minutes, she finally gets it. But I believe she just gave up. They take their drinks and leave. I go to the back and yell curse words as loud as I can for a minute. 2. I work as a dishwasher on work-study at my college. One of the things that I have to take care of every so often is to run out clean silverware to the racks next to the serving stations. The racks are set up in sets of six cups three rows of two cups each, and the silverware rests, sorted, in those cups until students take them. We are trained generally to put the forks in the top two cups, spoons in the middle two, and the knives in the bottom two. One, however, is different. Next to the entree station, knives aren't used terribly often, 
but we go through many more forks than there are at other locations. So for that rack specifically, we set up three cups of forks, two of spoons and one of knives. One day I'm running silverware out as usual, and I come up to the entree station. The one cup for knives is empty, so I grab a handful and fill it up. About ten seconds later I'm wrestling with some forks that got locked together. Happens way more often than you'd think. And some girl comes up next to me and taps me on the shoulder. Me, being the socially awkward dweeb I am, stutters to ask what it is she needs. I have a suggestion for something you all could try. Well, we have a suggestion box for that, but okay, let's hear it. Well, you see, we don't really use knives all that much over here. But we run out of forks during rushes and have to go look for them at other stations. Why don't you fill the knife cup with forks instead? Uh, we already do that though, and I proceed to explain that there is an extra set of forks at this station rather than knives, compared to what we are normally trained to do. She gestures to the cup of knives that I just refilled. Yeah, but look at all those knives. They've been here all day, nobody uses them. Just put forks there. My apologies, but you are mistaken. The knives do get used. That cup was empty. I just refilled it maybe a minute ago. Her response I can still hear clear as day. I don't really believe that. You can try to believe that if you want. And immediately turns and walks away. What the fuck? Who says that? put me in quite a sour mood for the rest of the night because apparently I habitually lie about our placement of silverware. 3. This was back in December. I wasn't a server, but a multifaceted hostess who did anything and everything to appease the customers of the shit show of an Italian restaurant I worked at. You know the one. I could tell you stories of how grown women left shit smeared on the bathroom wall or projectile puked across three stalls. But this is a story that started outside of work. I was living with my then boyfriend, now ex, and heading out to work. To get to work, I'd have to drive on a four-lane road, a divided highway, two lanes for each direction, with a median separating them. Now along each side of the roadway are a lot of different shops, so you have a lot of people pulling out and trying to join the flow of traffic. Most people know how to pull out. Most people. As I'm approaching the pullout for one of the little shopping centers, I notice a woman, we'll call her this bitch, is sitting in her SUV waiting to pull out. I drive closer, she still waits. Closer, she waits. And keep in mind this is a 55 mile per hour area, you can't just slam on your brakes. As soon as I am closer than a single car length away from her, this bitch decides to floor it and throw her car out in front of mine. Of course, there is no time to slow down, so my other two options are crumple my car by smashing into her back end or throw the wheel and swing, tires squealing, into the lane over as another car accelerates past. My heart rates up, I have anxiety, and my throat is sore from the scream that just ripped out of my throat. Only it doesn't end there. Because as soon as I swing my car into the other lane, this bitch throws her car into my lane again. Once again, nearly slamming her back end into my car. And I'm forced to do a 180 to avoid her car crushing my passenger side. Cars are honking at her. I feel ready to cry. But my shift is in 10 minutes and I wave and yell thank yous at the window to the stopped cars offering concern and support. Then I booked it to work trying to forget the lady and the fact that she almost took away my main asset and potentially my life. Depending. My heart rate had all but slowed to normal when I parked at work and got out of the car, only to hear, Hey, who do you people think you are? You've got to be kidding me. Lo and behold, it's this bitch. Pulling in after me, window rolled down and red in the face while the man in the passenger seat rubs his forehead. They followed me from 20 minutes away just to berate me for their traffic mistake. Do you have any idea what you've done? Are you a fucking idiot? Who taught you to drive, you fucking idiot? I cannot believe you did that. 
Do you pay attention at all? You fucking idiot. You get the gist. Now I'm at work, and I'm poor. I'm also not about to make a scene because I'm not that physically strong, so even if I did try and fight this woman, I'm not sure it'd go in my favor. Crazy always wins, and I was not on this lady's level of lunatic. Ma'am, I'm very sorry you feel that way. It was the best I could come up with. I hope you don't have kids. Please, God, tell me you don't have children. You'll ruin them. Please, dear God, tell me you don't have children. She acted like she was praying, and I saw her, presumably husband, put his hand on her arm and gesture to her to go. I figured it was the end of it, and started walking inside. Of course, as soon as I walk in, I find one of my favorite co-workers bussing one of the front tables, and start telling her the story. She can't believe it, and honestly, I can't either. Luckily, I didn't have to prove myself, because this bitch wanted everyone to know that she was, in fact, that bitch. As I'm still discussing this story, I hear a familiar shriek of a woman whose license probably should be revoked. Are you fucking kidding me? No! Apparently, she had decided my restaurant was the perfect place to die in after our little incident. I cannot eat here, not if she's going to be touching my food. Her husband looked at her as if to say, are you serious? And I chimed in with, well ma'am, I'm a hostess, so I promise I won't be. That wasn't enough of a promise, however, and she continued to squawk in the middle of our entryway. I can't eat the food if she's touched it. She'll ruin it just like she's ruining her children. Please God promise me you won't have any more. We can't take it. You'll ruin them. My managers did nothing to stop this, and only on my last note of, I don't have any children, so don't worry. Did she utter one final, please God, keep it that way, before her husband showed her out. It was an okay shift after that. I hope she's happy to know I still don't have any children now, but unfortunately, luckily, I don't work there anymore, so I can't update her. 4. It was my first week on the job, the very first day after my training ended at a small historic Bavarian bistro. Now this place had been sort of slowly decaying for decades now, when it was first built, it was the center point of the resort, but the owner refused to do anything to it. From opening up additional doors where the resort was expanding, all the way to refusing to get new chairs since the restaurant opened decades before. But it had historic value. And so you still got a fair number of tourists who wanted the ethnic experience. Probably the number one thing the restaurant was famous for was its fondue. If you don't know, a meat fondue is very different from a cheese fondue. Cheese fondue is basically just a pot of cheese sauce that you dip apples and cheese and sausage in. If the burner goes out, it's not a huge issue. Because much like bread, you'll probably have eaten it all before it has the chance to cool down. The meat fondue is different. You get plates of uncooked meat, which you then have to cook for yourself in a hot pot of seasoned water and spices. This means that if your burner goes out, you'll be waiting for a long time. I never had yet served one of these things before, and had no idea what I was getting myself into. So it's getting towards the end of the evening, and it's been relatively quiet. But at about 8, a party of 10 comes in, and by happenstance, it goes to me. Okay, no problem, take a deep breath, and go for it. What do they order? I kid you not. Eight fondues. Eight! And not only that, but four bottles of wine. Okay. I rush back and start asking questions to the shift manager. Let's call him Joey. Now let me tell you about Joey. He was an Eastern European guy, the kind of guy who doesn't ever seem to shower. He had zits covering the upper half of his face, which he refused to take care of. Instead of doing his job, he would basically just sit by the door and flirt with the waitresses and it was common knowledge that he was cheating on his girlfriend, though I didn't actually know that at the time. Still, it was my first day and he promised to help me out, so we get all the fondue burners ready, and then I rush off to get their wine. The bartender says, Yeah, we don't have any of those kinds of wine. WTF? Why are they on the menu then? Apparently, Mr. Manager was too lazy to bother checking to see what kinds of wine we actually had, so he just used the same menu they'd used for years, regardless of not having half the types on there. 
So I go back to the table, apologize, and ask them if they'd like to make another selection. He's still pretty polite at this point, and I again apologize and go back to the bar, where the guy has a quick conversation in Spanish with another bartender, before giving me a bottle of wine and sending me back. Foolishly, I didn't check to see what exactly he had given me, but it was my first day, and first time I'd ever served wine. I go back and do the whole, this is the wine you're getting, would you like to taste, etc. a bit? That's not the wine I ordered. What? But the bartender... I ordered the 2002 Hellfreezer Grove wine. This is the 2013 Chateau Picard wine. What are you trying to pull here? At this point, the guy is getting pretty annoyed, voices raising a little bit. So the manager comes over to ask me what's wrong. I pass it off to him, as the fondues are coming up. And I rush off to get all eight fondues. Finally, things start going right as I manage to get all the fondues on the table and lit, the water bubbling happily away. I'm not quite sure what the manager says, but he manages to get him a bottle of wine he'll accept. And everything finally seems to be going fine. That is, until about five minutes later. Apparently, nobody had bothered to refill the fondue burners. One by one, every single one of them went out. The water stopped boiling and the meat stopped cooking. At which point... They were forced to sit there and drink mediocre wine and yell that their food wasn't working. In a bit of a panic, I rush out with different burners to replace the first ones. But those turn out to be empty too. I sprint back to the storage room to find the refilling canisters. Give one to a few different waiters and the manager, and we all start trying to refill these things. Which once again makes them last for about five minutes before they go out. By this point... The head of the party is basically furious. This is turning out to be a fucking nightmare. I distinctly remember him saying, I'm doing my best to throw out a few jokes here and there to keep the mood light, but they're basically at maximum annoyance by now, which isn't helped by what I hear the manager saying. Things along the lines of, uh, This sort of thing happens, what can you do? Etc. Basically trying to dismiss any responsibility. Finally... I figure out that in order to fill the burners, you need to flip them upside down. Something nobody else working there apparently knew. I refill them all to the brim, get the fondue burners going, and they're finally able to eat. When it's all over, I ask them how it was, and he says it was good, but that he'd like to talk to the manager again. I get him, and they speak quietly for a few minutes before they finally call me over. You did the best you could in tough circumstances, he says, and shakes my hand. I try to shake firmly and look him in the eye. I hope the rest of your night is good at any rate, I manage to reply. I heard later from the manager that he ended up comping the bottles of wine. But when I went back to collect the bill, I saw that he left me a 40% tip on what was left. All in all, not a bad night. I definitely won't forget it. And every day after that, I would fill up the fondue burners before my shift started. 5. In my 20s, I lived in a small town with approximately two U.S. national parks. Summer was inundated by tourists, and in winter there was world-class skiing. I worked at a popular restaurant and bar right at the base of the resort. It was perfect for me as I could spend all day snowboarding. Take the last tram of the day, then ride down to work. Our bar was the hotspot for apres ski and our resort would open for dinner promptly at 5.30. There was frequently a line of 30 or so patrons waiting outside when we opened the door. We were always slammed, and it was not unusual for us to serve 120 covers per server, with 10 servers during a shift. Our dining fare was casual, prime rib, roast chicken, etc. We also had a large salad bar. You could make an entire entree of the salad bar for $6.95, or add it onto any entree for $3.00. We'd also have a special entree every night that included salad bar in the price of the special. This particular night, my two-top was a pleasant enough couple that came in with the first wave after the door opened. The restaurant was still pretty empty. I approached the table to get a drink order and tell them about the nightly special. The lady ordered a Diet Coke and her date ordered a virgin strawberry daiquiri. I go to the bar and get berated by the bartender for making him bust out the blender on a drink with no alcohol. Not my fault, dude. I deliver the drinks, and they're ready to order. She wants a special, and he wants prime rib. 
I mention hers comes with salad bar and ask if he wants to add it onto his for three dollars. He scoffs at me that he would not like to add it. No skin off my nose, my go put in the order. As I'm typing it into the computer, I see them get up and go to the salad bar together. They take a salad plate and load it with a comically large salad. They return to their table and commence to share the huge salad. If we were busy, I probably wouldn't have noticed and if he hadn't been such a jerk about it, I would probably have let it slide. When your tips are your entire income, you've got to learn to hold your tongue or you may not get a good tip. I went over to them and said, you know you're not really supposed to share the salad bar. Can you try to be a little less obvious about it? The guy flies into a rage and demands to talk to the manager. Now, every other restaurant I'd ever worked in had a policy that the customer is always right. And they'd bend over backward to accommodate assholes since people are much more likely to share a bad experience than a good one. My manager on duty that night was this awesome guy named Stevie that didn't like to take anyone's shit. He listens to the guy's tirade, which concluded with the guy saying I should be fired. Stevie is nodding and looking apathetic. I'm sort of hovering nearby since I'm nervous about what this guy is saying. I figure I'll probably have to apologize. Stevie motions me over. The irate guy has a smug look on his face. Stevie says, Now that I have my server here, let me see if I have this straight. You were stealing Salad Bar and you want me to discipline my server because she asked you to knock it off. Maria Von Trapp, print out their check for me, please. I bring it back. He looks at it and says, Okay, we'll charge them for one full-price salad bar, the Diet Coke, and the... <laughs> virgin daiquiri. He then tells the diners to get up and follow him to the cashier station at the front of the restaurant. But we didn't eat yet. The guy splutters. No, and you're not going to. Not tonight, not ever. Now pay your tab and get the fuck out of here. The lady looked embarrassed and the guy was red-faced with anger. I was amazed. Best manager ever. He even added auto gratuity when he was adjusting their check, so I got a 15% tip. Honestly, hearing him tell them to fuck off was better than any other tip I could have received. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates, number 14. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Okay, since it's a weekend, I'm going to keep this one short. I just hope you all have a nice time. Currently, I'm hearing high winds and rain as I record this. So, I don't think I'll be out much shopping. I was planning on doing a little bit. But, eh, maybe it's for the best. I've got a lot of stories to record for Halloween, so... If I'm stuck inside, then maybe it'll it'll force me to to, uh, to to knuckle down and get them done maybe a little bit early. We'll see. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.